Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, everybody. Scott Sprites are here. We are DocSports.com. I'm with Chris Kringle this week. Uh, you know, I, I had one of these. Spread the cheer. <laughs> Spread the cheer. <laughs> You've been known to do that once in a while, yeah, even I when do. it's not the holidays, Tony right, George. Right. I had one of these, and I was walking around like this. I could barely move, so I had to go back with a boring, bland, you know, sport coat and yeah, T-shirt. I'm, I'm wearing a men's spank so I can get this over my, <laughs> my over my belly there. But, you know, we're here gonna, we are, Christmas cheer, baby. <laughs> we're going to take your word for it. <laughs> anyway, egg dog comes later, everybody. Yeah. All right, listen, we're talking some football. Last week, the book struck back. Uh, mm. Games like the New Orleans Saints knocking off Tampa Bay, especially the Lions, not only covering the spread against wow. Arizona, but how about the outright win? I'm going to guess there were probably some survivor pool, pool of people that had the Detroit, excuse me, had the Arizona Cardinals yeah. in that particular game and were yeah. shocked when they saw the final score. But we're going to kick things off, first of all, Tony, by telling everybody if you're not yet a member at DocSports.com and you want to give it a trial run, it's a cool way to do it. You click on the link below the video, get yourself set up for a free $60 account, and then you can use those free 60 bucks on any of his daily packages, any of mine, anybody else on the roster at DocSports.com, and check out basketball. This has been a great start to the season. 65% since October 21st in the NBA, over $5,000. Wow. 64% in college basketball, so wow. check it out. We're just, you know, I'm going to start buying your stuff. It's better me by a long shot right <laughs> well, now. Well, I'll tell you what, man. They can wow. go grab it, and uh, it doesn't last forever, as we know in this business. Right. Knocking on whatever this is. Yep. Anyway, let's talk a little football. Colts at the Cardinals. It's a pick'em game. Total 49 and a half on Saturday night. As crazy as it's been with all the COVID protocol situations, I saw on Wednesday afternoon just one player between these two teams who's got COVID, who's on the protocol list, and that is Jonathan Ward. That's been it. Uh, the Cards obviously need a win here. They lost four of seven, lost to Detroit. What are your thoughts on this particular game? Well, never bet. I'll tell you a piece of advice. Never bet on a team because they're due. Absolutely. I mean, uh, <laughs> the Cardinals are due, and they last week they just never got off the bus. And I thought sooner or later that the coaching inabilities and shortcomings of Kingsbury would rear its ugly head again. And it has for the Cardinals. They yeah. just have not been well coached. Their game plan's been all over the board. Now you're looking this weekend. Ertz, uh, their big tight end, is questionable. Connors, their running back, is mm -hmm. questionable. And uh, i tell you what, that defense of theirs, I wrote this down, 18th against the rush. Why? Well, we all know how good the Patriots have been this year, especially defensively. Taylor lit him up for 170 yards last week. Yep. What's he going to do against the Cardinals defense? I'll tell you one thing right now. This opened up at plus five, and now it's down to a pick -em. The look ahead is plus five here. Mm -hmm. That's a big swing. As well as um, the Colts have been playing, it's kind of a tale of two teams in different directions, Scott. But as well as they have been playing, um, I really would have liked to have the five in a pick -em ball game. You don't know. Um, I'll tell you what I will do. They're a great teaser play this weekend. That's going to be a three-point ball game one way or the other in my book. I really think that Arizona is going to bring everything they have to the table. But you take a look at that injury list, and, uh, and it's a little yeah. concerning for them, for me. And I think that the, the Colts are the healthier team. They're the team with momentum and on a roll. But I'll definitely use them in a teaser this week. The yeah. total 44. I don't really know. 49 which, and a half. Or 49 yeah. and a half. I don't really know which way to go with that other than I think the Colts are going to utilize Taylor to their advantage, which eats a lot of clock. Sure. And I think maybe a little bit on the under 49 and a half might be a way to lean in that one in terms of the total, Scott. Uh, the next game here, um, this here we go. Uh, the big one, this is for the AFC East title. I'm glad you got this one because I, I don't want to <laughs> pick it. I'm going to watch this one as a fan only, folks. Maybe Buffalo in the teaser. I don't know. But the Buffalo at uh, the uh, Bill, uh, the Bills at the Patriots. Uh, no, I haven't had eggnog yet. Uh, <laughs> That's but, the problem. But uh, Yeah, I'm not functioning <laughs> properly. Uh, Patriots, a two and a half. If you like the Patriots, they're under that key number of three, yeah. Scott. And the total, 43 and a half. I think we'll see... A little more scoring than we did the first time around, and probably a few more passes for Matt Jones. Yeah, we were talking, uh, we were doing the, the shoot with uh, Chuck Esposito. You have to check that out. 
uh, and he talked about, no, I'm not putting the prop up of whether or not yeah. uh, New England is going to throw the ball more than three times yeah. this week in this particular game. Hang the hook on it. I'll take the over. Will you take the over? Yeah. yeah let him go ahead. I'll tell you what, make it eight and a half, and I'll still take the over. There you go. <laughs> I had Buffalo in that Monday night game with the weather situation that rolled in, mm-hmm. and I was so ticked off at the way Buffalo coached that game. Uh, and the way they approach, they threw 30 passes with a you know 80 mile per hour win. I'm exaggerating, but it might as well have been. And as far as New England, they were coached much better. They threw three passes. Yep. They ran through yep. Buffalo like a hot knife through butter. And here's the thing about this Buffalo defense: I don't know that they're going to make adjustments to be any better nope. against the run than they have been. Not and sure that they can. That's the thing. I just don't know if they can make that many adjustments. And then you look at the Bills' offense. Even last week in the 17-point win over Carolina, they only gained 312 yards. Yeah. It wasn't like it was a 500-yard performance. They scored 31 points. It was 31 points, 300 yards. They took care of a, a really bad. Carolina football team, I think it's going to stay under, Tony. I know Buffalo's going to throw the ball more, but at 43 and a half, they don't have a great offense. New England can still run the ball, throw short passes, which is what they want to do, and they're going to be a little bit angry after last week's performance on the ground defensively against the Colts. I I like under 43 and a half. You know what? I'm I'm going to be the biggest Bills fan you ever saw this weekend because I got a futures ticket on them Ah, at minus 140 to win the AFC East, and uh, it's a substantial wager. So uh, you do have a little action then, sort play of. Some defense, <laughs> run the damn ball, balance your attack, do something, beat Belichick, please. <laughs> That's all I want for Christmas, Listen. Santa. Listen, man, do it for the man in the sweater. Yeah. I mean, he wears the sweater. Yeah. And, uh, whatever. Come on, it's a little Christmas magic. <laughs> Sprinkle some on me. Big game up in Minnesota as the Rams are a field goal favorite on the road over many. Total 49 and a half in this one. And I was looking at the Vikings the other night. It's funny, I was kind of texting back with a couple of betters here in town, and I'm like, this team isn't even going to reach 200 yards yet. They're going to win a game by double digits. That, of course, before Chicago scores that touchdown at the end of the game. They ended up with 193 yards, Minnesota. 3.39 yards per play. Not per rush. 3.39 yards per play. It was not a good offensive performance. That makes, going back to the previous game against Pittsburgh, five of the last six quarters that this team has not looked good at all and are fortunate to have won both. But they have had good fortune. They're at home. Can they handle the Rams this week? I don't think so. I think the good fortune runs out. I mean, they've, they've, you know, they've won some games with smoke and mirrors and they've lost four games they should have won this year. And they, they get up to big leads and then they piss them away. And you could talk about, you know, Cousins numbers look good on paper. It's not converting into wins and losses. This is Mike Zimmer's last season. Right off in the sunset with a supermodel girlfriend because it's over. <laughs> and this game here, what are you going to do to stop, to balance your attack? You can't run the ball against this defense, Scott. Sure. You know, right now, you got the 30th ranked defense in the NFL. Mike Zimmer, the 30th <laughs> ranked defense, 29th against the pass, against, by the way, Stafford, who's familiar with this team, familiar mm-hmm. with this building, you know, number brings in the number four ranked pass offense. But the one thing that the that the Rams have done recently is they've started more in the run game. Right. They've really started to balance their attack. They finally got it through his head. Run the ball first, dummy, then set up Stafford with play action pass instead of putting it on his shoulders. They've been able to score more consistently. Mm-hmm. They've held the turnovers down. Uh, they've done a nice job, and they're coming in here against a, a Minnesota team that I think is probably a touchdown, 10 points lesser of a team here. I'm going to lay the three. I think it's a cheap number. Um, I wouldn't even mess with the Vikings in a teaser here. Okay. I really wouldn't. I think the Rams are going to get uh, a convincing win here on uh, – that was on Sunday. Yep. Um, next, we're going to go to the Baltimore. I'm going for two Ravens. <laughs> uh, at the Bengals here, a big game. I know uh, – be sure and tune in to uh, Scott's video he did with Chuck Esposito. They talked about the Baltimore Ravens yeah. a little bit and he kind of his thoughts from an odds maker's perspective on what's going on there. But at the end of the day, uh, Huntley filled in nicely again mm-hmm. at quarterback. Played I well. think they're probably going to have Jackson back. I don't know what the status is of that yet. Um, but they're at the Bengals' big divisional game. If you want to win the division, 
This is the game you've got to win. Right. And you're catching uh, two and a half and total 44 here, Scott. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I'm, first of all, Lamar Jackson, like last week and the week before, or at least last week, listed as questionable with the ankle situation. I thought Ty Huntley's looked poised in the pocket. I thought his accuracy, especially on longer passes, as you mentioned, yep. going into last week's start, better than Lamar. Uh, listen, when Lamar has the weapons around him, it's, he's as dangerous as it gets. But again, he's questionable for this game. I'm an analytics guy. I like analytics in every sport. I really do. However, every once in a while, there's got to be a situation when you look at the situation as it's happening and forget about the analytics. Now, Baltimore's gone for two late in the game, last seconds of the game, a couple of weeks now in the last couple, and they've lost both of those games by failing on that two-point conversion rather than kicking the extra point going into overtime. Last week, I think the analytics should have been thrown out of the mix. You're at home. You got a chance to tie it up with an extra point to go to overtime at home mm -hmm. with the Hall of Fame kicker. Yep. And you go for two and you come up short. As good as he's been, Huntley, it's a backup quarterback without great weaponry around him. I never just thought take, it was a bad situation. I don't know why these coaches never take sure points off the board in any game. I mean, that's well, just... And, uh, and I thought, you know, analytics-wise, I get it. And Harbaugh's but a not good in coach, spot. but yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Not in that spot when you got the best kicker and you're at home. Justin Tucker. So anyway, there fame. you go. Absolutely, yep. it will be. So they're 0-2 yep. in games that, you know, you, you never know. They could be 2-0. Listen, the first week I thought it was smart to go for two, not last week. That's all I'm trying to say here. Having said that, we mentioned how well Ty Huntley's looked. I actually think the Ravens bounce back here. I had Cincy a few weeks ago when they played. Did I expect them to put 40 on the board and kick him? Side kick their butt sideways all Boy. game long. No, I did not. But we Behind got the, the win. Woodshed. Yeah, this time I think Baltimore bounces back after mm -hmm. the couple of losses, gets the win. It's two and a half. You know, sometimes a good signal on these games is when a book seems to be getting tickets on that two and a half point favorite, but never quite goes to three. No. It's kind of a good signal of where they think the sharp or the smart money is going to be. It's and currently two and a half, but it still might get to three by the weekend. By but. the way, if you uh, we opened up with a teaser, you get in with a teaser. Take Baltimore up to eight and a half. There you go. And stick them with somebody. Oh, I, got a I lot. mean, big yeah. time. I mean, don't tease somebody through zero, yeah. like the Rams or something, but stick them with the Colts or, you know, somebody else this, uh, this weekend. Yep. Maybe no, like Christmas that. Day, tease uh, Green Bay down to minus one. They ought to be able to win by one. There's a lot of teaser options this week in my in my book, Scott. Absolutely. And, uh, when we sign, I know you always sign up. I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad, and a Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays, whatever. <laughs> what, whatever the flavor or the genre is, uh, we sure appreciate all your business this past year at DocSports.com. And, and I'll have a great holiday, everybody. And also wanted to mention real quickly, we will be here for yeah. the semifinals college football show. We will do that next Wednesday, yeah. which is what, about the 29th? And we'll have that out by Wednesday night, so we'll be talking about those Friday college football semifinal matchups, both both of us, plus with Chuck Esposito. Mm -hmm. Have a great weekend, everybody. Check out all the guys and all the goings-on at DocSports.com. We'll see you again next week. Let's put them in the win column.